disgusting. Rage in Palace after witness denounces BBC support Meghan and Harry against William. The BBC's new documentary on the royal family's relationship with the media has been slammed by a journalist who appeared in the two-part deep dive into the royals and publicity. Amanda Platell said she felt deceived by how her comments were portrayed in the princes and the press, after the first installment aired on Monday evening on BBC Two. Writing in the Daily Mail, she wrote. Eight months ago, I was introduced to the BBC's rising star Amol Rajan who asked me to be interviewed for a TV documentary he was making. It was about Princes William and Harry and their relationship with the media after the death of their mother Diana. He said the working title was The Princes and the Press but, he went on to say, Delphically, that it didn't capture what we're doing. Indeed it didn't. The first part of the resultant series, broadcast last Monday, was, in my opinion, a hatchet job on the palace and the press, and a hagiography of Harry and Meghan. It was so biased against the royals the palace has since threatened a boycott of future dealings with the BBC. Clearly, being party to such a calumny was not what I signed up for when I submitted myself to at least two hours of filmed conversation with Rajan, who it must be said, was charming, self-deprecating and made me feel everything was on the level. When I saw the program, my two hours had been reduced to less than two minutes of selective quotes. I felt utterly conned. To avoid further ghastliness, I asked Rajan to show me any other edits of our chat that might appear in the second episode on Monday, given that six months has passed since the interview. He replied, alas impossible to share, we are still working on the program. I'm so sorry as always want to be fair. I think viewers have already made up their mind about how fair the series is. The producers allowed Meghan's lawyer Jenny Affia to speak with the Duchess's approval, at length and unchallenged. Most shamefully, they seem to have failed to offer the royal family the same opportunity. What's more, they gave disproportionate prominence to Ahmed Scobie, a Meghan supergroupie who was co-author of a fawning biography. He had free reign to claim the palace briefed against her because she was too popular. Yet the national broadcaster, set up by royal charter, refused palace staff the courtesy of a preview to see what the Queen and her family were accused of. I'm deeply ashamed to be associated with the princes and the press and feel let down by Amol Rajan, who I believe misled me. During Monday's episode, he highlighted two of my Daily Mail columns that were critical of the Duchess of Cambridge and Prince William even though I've written any number in their favour. It seemed I was being used to bolster Meghan's case. I should have known better. However badly treated I feel, heaven knows what the royals feel about being trashed by the BBC. The royal family have publicly expressed their outrage at the BBC since the first episode of The Princes and the Press aired just three days ago, but when else have the royals been in a feud with the BBC? Despite having been commissioned to film an insider documentary of the British monarch back in 1969, the BBC has since been involved in a number of public feuds with the royal family. From the iconic BBC interview with Princess Diana to the latest The Princes and the Press documentary, it is not uncommon for the public broadcaster to push boundaries when it comes to the royals, and these are the royal family's biggest feuds with the BBC to date. The royal family have come to head with the BBC on multiple occasions with everything from intrusive interviews to bias reporting sparking anger between the two prolific British institutions. In recent years, the relationship between the firm and the press has been cast into the spotlight particularly following the departure of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex.